November 2012, an act of defiance. The arsenal of a group known as Palestinian Islamic Jihad, parading through the streets of Gaza. But amongst the hundreds of guns, something less ordinary appeared. A state-of-the-art European weapon in the hands of an organization the West called terrorists. This is the F2000, and it's the pride of Belgian weapons manufacturing. It resembles the, uh, a rifle from a video game, um, quite strongly. So capabilities-wise, there are plenty of other options, but if you want something that makes you stand out, uh, or makes your, your personal bodyguard unit stand out, then it's a good choice. So how did a rifle from a sleepy Belgian town end up in the hands of jihadists? This is one of the world's biggest weapons manufacturers, and it's here where the journey began for the F2000. According to these shipping documents, in May 2009, more than 300 rifles that were made in this factory legally left here, destined for Libya. Two years later, war engulfs Libya. After intense fighting, the Gaddafi regime is on its last legs. In September 2011, the F-2000 reappears, this time in the hands of rebel fighters. One of them, known as Ali, told a BBC source how he first found the rifle. He claims, standing on a checkpoint in central Libya, a Gaddafi regime car approached. He said, we forced them out the car took the car and handed them to the revolutionary authorities. In the boot of the car, they found what he called an extraordinary weapon. They continued to carry the rifle throughout the war, and when the fighting was over, he told the source, we sent them to help the people of Gaza. He says it was a gift. A year later, an F-2000 is seen in the hands of Palestinian Islamic Jihad, who have recently confirmed to the BBC they still possess it. Experts believe the weapon seen in Gaza is indeed from that original shipment from the Belgian factory. Seeing the two different rifles, the F2000 and the AK-103, side by side in a conflict was very unusual. And to see them again uh, not, not long after in Gaza was a fairly telling sign. From there it was just a matter of connecting the dots and, and speaking to sources on the ground who could confirm our suspicions. As long as there's been war, there's been weapons. And it leaves the question, if you can't stop the guns, is it possible to stop the fighting? Tom Martinson, BBC News.